underground cable temperature. We have a three-phase power cable layered in flat formation buried underground. The cable carries alternating current and our task is to calculate the temperature. In fact, this example is based on the example described in the IEC standard. There you can find all cable parameters, losses in the conductors, in the sheaf, in the dielectric, thermal conductivities of materials. So our task here is simple. We need to simulate steady state heat transfer problem and calculate the temperature distribution. OK, let's start quick field now. In quick field, I create new problem. Cable. Next. Problem type is steady state heat transfer. Model class is plane parallel. Length units are millimeters, and I'm going to calculate all values per one meter of the cable length. Finish. On the left, you can see the problem pane, and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You can draw the geometry model here, or you can import the geometry model from the AutoCAD.exe file. The model is simple, so I'm going to draw it from scratch. First, I'm going to insert a circle that will represent a conductor and the circle diameter is let me check 57.5 millimeters next insert a circle with a diameter of 59 millimeters 105 106 114 and 122. Okay, zoom to fit. Now let's assign labels. To labels, we can distinguish objects and provide material properties. Switch to select objects mode. Click the object to select. This is the conductor. For the block, I specify the label conductor. And this is the dielectric. This is the shape. And this is the serving. And these thin layers are semiconducting. Let's zoom in to assign label. This is the conductor screen. And this one is a core screen. OK. Now you can click the label in the tree and see the corresponding geometric objects in the geometry model. Let's provide physical properties. Double click the label in the tree, and here you should provide the thermal conductivity the dielectric. These data are stored in another table. Here it is, paper insulation in oil field cables. The thermal resistivity is 5, and the reciprocal value to the 5 is 0.2. OK. The semiconducting layers adjusting to the insulation features the same thermal conductivity, 0.2. And for the conductor screen, again, 0.2. Now, for the serving. Serving is made of polyethylene, and for polyethylene, the thermal resistivity is 3.5. Now the reciprocal value is 0.2857. The conductor is made of copper, 
thermoconduct teacher of the copper is 318 and the sheep is made of lead with thermal conductivity of 35. Okay. And remember, we should also provide loss values. Again, let's scroll down. Here you can see the loss values in the conductor, in the dielectric, and in the sheaf. Okay, for the sheaf, the losses value is 2.1 watts per meter and in quick field i should specify watts per meter cubed so i should divide this value by the cross-section area let's calculate it the cross-section area is this value millimeter squared so i divided it by cross-section area and i should Convert from millimeter squared to the meter squared. This is times 10 to the power of minus 6. Okay. For the dielectric, the loss value is 13.35. And again, I should divide by the cross section area. Here it is. times 10 to the power of minus 6. And for the conductor, the losses are 30.3. And I should divide by the cross-section here, which is this value. OK. Times 10 to the power of minus 6. Now that's all. In fact, there are three cables buried at the depth of one meter, and the spacing between the cable centers is 300 millimeters. So I select, switch to select mode, se select this cable, follow to the edit, duplicate selection, and make a copy by the displacement by 300 millimeters to the right and another copy duplicate selection displaced by 300 millimeters to the left okay let's zoom to feet and these cables are buried in the ground so I move them down by one meter, 1,000 millimeters. OK. Next, let's draw the ground body region. Switch to insert mode, zoom out. We cannot draw an infinitely large block here. Still, I'm going to make it large enough so that the external boundaries will not affect the temperature distribution. Minus 20 meters to the left and 20 meters to the right. Change the light type to half arc and draw the arc. Switch to select mode, click to select, this is the ground. And for the ground, the thermal resistivity is 1. OK. Also, I assign a label to the ground to air boundary edge. Click to select and assign the label convection. All the heat generated by the cables will be transferred to the ground surface and will be taken away by the air. And for this edge, I specify the convection temperature and the convection coefficient. The air temperature is 10 degrees, but the convection coefficient is not specified. In fact, the convection coefficient depends on the difference between Earth's temperature and the air temperature. And we have not calculated the Earth temperature yet. So we should guess here. 
well, let's put it 10 here, and then we'll run the analysis again with other value to see how this value affects the solution. Okay. Now the geometry model and the data are ready. Before I start the analysis, I should build the finite element mesh. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Let's zoom in. I believe I would like to have a more dense mesh here, so I'm going to insert a vertex here. Double click to insert the vertex and maybe here and here. Let's build the pilot and that mesh again. Now we have more dense mesh here. Okay, save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem is solved. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the temperature distribution and the maximum temperature of 84 degrees is, I believe, in the center of the conductor of the cable that is placed in the middle. You can check the temperature value here in the status bar. And you can use the local values tool just click any point and get the temperature value here. And you can specify the exact coordinates. Zero, minus 1000. That is the center of the conductor of the cable in the middle. Also, you can use the contour tool just draw the line and get the temperature distribution along this line on the xy plot. This is the conductor temperature, the temperature drop in the insulation, the shift temperature, the temperature drop in the serving and the temperature drop in the soil. The exact values you can see in the table x, y coordinates, temperature value. Okay. You can also use the contour tool to calculate the integrals. Contour, remove contour, and surround the conductor. Now I can calculate the heat flux produced by this conductor. Remember, it should be 45.75 watts per one meter. And they have the model depth of one meter. So I follow to the integrals and this is the heat flux per one meter of the cable length. Let's compare 45.7, 35.75. It is not the exact match and the difference is caused by the calculation error. So you can guess the accuracy value. Zero point one per cent. And what about the temperature? In the example, it is stated that the operating conductor of temperature is eighty five degrees Celsius, and we have got eighty four. Remember, we have guessed the convection coefficient value. What will be the temperature if the convection coefficient is not 10, but say 5? Let's run the analysis again. Let's take a look at the results. Now the central cable conductor temperature is 86 degrees Celsius. If you search for the underground cable temperature on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the result pictures and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be all point and the results may be viewed using any QuickField edition, including QuickField Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.